Okay. Yay, we are live. We're live. Aloha. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday, everyone. I am back with my dear friend and sister and colleague and Lemurian bestie and all the things, Adrian mm. Schroeder. Hey, <laughs> how's everybody feeling today? Welcome, Amanda. If you're just hopping on, feel free to say hi mm -hmm. and share how you're feeling. Um, it's a lot going on. And we just wanted to come on and chat with you about a few things that she and I have been talking about. Um, and also to give you some information about what we have coming down the pipeline here with homecoming. Yes. But I am always really interested in the astrology component and Adrian is a brilliant, brilliant astrologist, you know, Mercury retrograde, which I guess started yesterday officially, uh, has been messing with my shit. Like I cannot even tell you I have had, you know, payments mess up. Um, my dear masculine counterpart bra spent quite a bit of time fixing my microphone and my camera and my computer earlier. Like it, it was just a lot. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then we have this going on, like on top of these other retrogrades, like Venus retrograde and everything. So Adrian, I would love if you would share a little bit about what's going on in the stars with us. Yes, I would love to, because I fucking love the stars. I'm a star seed. And what I know about the stars is they always have our back. And when we're willing to study them and understand them, it frees us, it liberates us, and it validates us. <laughs> yeah. So yesterday, um, Wednesday, August 23rd, was the day that the sun entered Virgo and Mercury stationed retrograde. And Wednesdays are ruled by Mercury, which is the planet of communication. So it was a triple whammy for communication, for anything tech. And, and I like to think of Mercury retrograde as it's a big fucking joke. And, and spirit is like, oh, you the humans think you're in control. I'm just going to remind you there's a bigger grid here. <laughs> so and I love that energy because it's more playful yeah. and then also you can just laugh and build in extra time and this is what a retrograde is it doesn't matter what planet it is it doesn't matter like what part of your chart or what part of the collective it's highlighting a retrograde is a second chance from spirit it's when mm. something comes back around again so if we think about retro grade retro past grade we get a grade for how it's going and then we get a chance it's like people freak the fuck out about uh, about retrograde because of pop astrology mm -hmm. and we get to go deeper than that and realize it's it's a gift and so i think of all these words refine review reflect and mm -hmm. also it's so deeply powerful in virgo because virgo is rules excellence virgo is misunderstood a lot of people view it as boring it's like beyonce is a fucking virgo okay she shows up to her craft daily to refine it, to, to practice, to be in consistent um, process. Virgo's all about the highest expression. So, so low vibration or unhealed Virgo can be perfectionism. Mm -hmm. However, 
the divine expression of Virgo is the verb perfect. Like, so to perfect Mm. something is to be in constant relationship with, with making the purest expression of it and adjusting and adjusting. Like we move the dial. It's all about information and Virgo rules, the 3d actions, daily routine, daily ritual, health, wellness. And so, um, it's also ruled by Mercury. So it's, it's just all like packed into this just, it's a time, it's a second chance for precision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really feel that. And just looking at spots where, and, you know, I've got some pretty serious six house placements, including Mm -hmm. my moon conjunct Neptune. And, you know, I'm just looking at like little spots where like, oh, that's kind of messy over here. And I never noticed it, you know, or like that, that isn't working for me anymore. Like, you know, why am I doing it this way? That's a little harder than it needs to be. Or like, that's that's not actually optimal. Um, Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, I think like, this can come up in, in a, a number of different, different mm-hmm. areas like finances or business or relationships mm-hmm. or whatever. But, uh, I do see like the opportunities there. And I personally love Virgo energy, um, mm-hmm. because it's also like, it's the divine mother. Yeah. I was going to say Virgo is the priestess. It's the, yeah. it's the people talk about it's the virgin like priestess. However, it's not like, oh, she doesn't have sex. It's she belongs to herself, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Well, and there's like an immense, just kind of like, I mean, I think the word purity can be really coded. Uh Um, So I'm hesitant to use it here, but like, I'm trying to think of another, there is like a divinity Yes. You know, and this kind of like cosmic nature where it's like the channel is clean. Yes. It's clean. You know what I mean? Clean and on her terms. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. And, and so where cancer is more like the, this is the way that I understand it. And I'm not the astrologer here, but you know, (laughs) cancer is more like the personal mother, like the human energy of like, Uh uh-huh mother and uh those relationships and everything Mm -hmm. I really feel Virgo as like the divine mother and and as the planet herself and Mm -hmm. that's a really really fucking powerful energy yeah and that's why that's why um I believe that my soul chose to be a Virgo stellium Mm -hmm. is because I came here to help anchor that frequency because the earth, the major earth place placement. So, and this is something we're going to go into in homecoming for you specifically, if you join and just in the collective for leaders of a new earth is like your Capricorn, your Taurus and your Virgo placements are huge signals and portals of your potential and medicine for a new earth because it's all Shit, the earth. I got a lot of that I need you to read yeah. my part you've never yeah, actually because... done that with me but I would love that <laughs> it's 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 like and Virgo energy is mutable earth that's where we create change and so Virgo is like yeah, we're, we're scaling this big ass mountain. However, these are the daily steps yeah. and they're digestible and we can swallow them and chew them and, and showing up daily <laughs> is, is so nourishing. And whereas I feel like, and, and a lot of people I work with and just cross paths with have big cap energy mm-hmm. because that's leadership that's earth leadership yeah 
Cap, Cappy can be very self-denying. Cappy can be like, like, oh, I'm going to whip myself into doing this kind of energy. Um, and what's so trippy about that is that it works to some extent. Yeah. But that's the old, that's the old programming. And so with the Capricorn energy, we see the big mountain. We see the long game and it can be very overwhelming because it's like yo look at the 3d reality how are we gonna make that how are we gonna make a new earth and virgo comes in and i just view her uh this is why i wear a lot of white too she's like the earth angel she's mm -hmm. like here here's a bite-sized meal for today and then tomorrow you're gonna eat this and then and then one day we'll be at the summit. You don't yeah. have to worry about the summit right now. <laughs> step by step by step. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. really, really speaking to my soul here. Cause these are themes I've, I've worked with in, in my emotional life and my spiritual life a lot with those Capricorn placements mm -hmm. in the sixth house. And, um, mm -hmm. I also have North node Taurus in the, in the 10th mm -hmm. house and, you know, that emotional, whipping and mm -hmm. the force and the kind of self-negation and what I've found to be really, really nourishing in my path is just the return to the daily practices and to the body. There's mm -hmm. something about that, that there's, there's just a grounding there and a nourishment for me there, mm -hmm. um, in, in prioritizing that. And I can feel that that's part of where the collective is being called now too, because the thing is, is like right now too, and this is just my perspective too. This is all my big picture Sagittarius thinking stuff mm -hmm. is like, you know, a lot of us can't see past the small steps right now, mm -hmm. actually, like, because we are in such a time of tremendous transition, not that we aren't always in some ways, but just mm -hmm. what I've been seeing and witnessing over the last several months, and particularly now, is that it's like, there's a whole new paradigm that's setting in mm -hmm. and ways that worked no longer work and mm -hmm. things that we maybe were attached to like dreams or goals or things like that. Mm -hmm. A lot of them have shifted and some of them have died mm -hmm. and, you know, there's a new path, but it's like not necessarily super clear. I'd love to hear if anybody's relating with this in the comments. Oh yeah. And Let us so, know. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, well, then what do we do? And the mm -hmm. other shadow of Capricorn that I really um, relate to is like the element of control. Mm -hmm. And there's just a huge, um, there's a huge shift taking place around that. I'll just like be vulnerable and share. Like for me personally, it's constantly been a theme in my evolution mm -hmm. of like, mm -hmm. how do I let go of that? But mm -hmm. in order to be able to let go of some of that really tight gripping and control, because it's like, I see the goal, right? Uh -huh. And I know the steps to get there and I'm going to fucking do it and I have to do it. And if I don't do it, then there's something wrong with me. And like, mm -hmm. everybody's watching to make sure that I do it. And it's up to me to do it. And it's up to only me to do it. And that responsibility is mine. And I'm taking that responsibility. Mm. like a really intense driver there. Mm -hmm. But I feel like this, this Virgo energy that is actually like really feminine, not that Capricorn can't be feminine. It is, but mm -hmm. there is this, um, there is this beautiful surrendering to service in yes. a different way. 
That's a key word of Virgo is service. It's all about service. She she cares about refining her craft because she only pours her best medicine into the field. Right. Like that's what she cares right. about. And um and it's a fine line because a lot of a lot of people really struggle with taking responsibility for their side of the street in terms of manifesting and co-creating with spirit. And so some, some of us, I mean, the illusion of control is very enticing because, (laughs) because it's like, Hey, if I can control it, then I, then I believe that I can guarantee the outcome. And so from a nervous system level, it's, it's, we're chasing the illusion of certainty. Yeah. And so allowing like from a place of deep love and devotion, I show up, I do my daily steps. Like I meet the universe halfway. I meet the universe halfway and then I allow myself to be met and I allow spirit to blow my fucking mind. Yeah. Yeah. That's and so it, it's both and um and it's it's a constant and and this is why I just love what we're creating with homecoming and and why it matters so deeply now because First of all, don't be fooled. I reroute myself back to the feminine all day, every day. Yeah. And so this is what I've done, especially as a projector. I, I know that what I, what I see, and this is my magic as a projector is sharing what I see and sharing patterns and, and like guiding the energy. And so I see that either people have a way overly developed masculine Mm -hmm. or overly developed feminine, I guess I would say. Mm -hmm. And, And it's about harmonizing the two. And so because I, you know, I'm raised by classical musicians. I grew up on a farm hard work actually turns me on (laughs) like so I take that divine discipline that is is very developed and I use it to reroute myself to the feminine I'm like your discipline is to go to the feminine right now like I, I recently posted a bunch of things about fear because people responded to one of my Instagram stories and um, there's a, there's a myth going around the collective that like you're supposed to be fearless and it's not about being fearless. Like fear is in the room and then you just move anyways. Mm -hmm. And so for me, the scariest thing is to slow down. I'm like, yo, what are we doing? (laughs) <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? What's the plan? And so, so I take my, my Capricorn and my Virgo and my Taurus rising. And I'm like, your job, your discipline is to mm-hmm. honor the feminine. Yeah. And so it's either that expression I notice, or honestly, because I have a developed masculine, I notice that a lot of priestesses or clients or leaders that I get to work with they're so in their feminine they're so magnetic they're so flowy and luscious and just like oh lean back and so a lot of what I do in supporting them is okay queen roll up your sleeves let's get dirty a little Mm -hmm. bit let's make a structure so your magic can be supported. Yeah. And so it's, it's usually one of those 
frequencies and neither one is right or wrong. It's just like, well, it's just in balance, you know? Yeah. And, and I love the word, um, harmony yes. because the South node is in Libra right now. So the collective, we're in a karmic purge of people pleasing of, of all this shit. Libra's Libra believes in justice, right? Yeah. Libra also is like, I'm scared as fuck to, I just want the peace. I just want everybody to be happy. By the way, don't even ask me what I want to order at dinner because I'm going to look at the menu for 30 minutes. (laughs) And it's, and so it's like, no girl, my Mars is in Libra. So, (laughs) so it's like any people pleasing the whole thing, any placating the comfort zone of others, any putting other people before your own harmony all must die for a new earth. And so I feel my natal or I'm I'm a Libra moon and the South node has been conjunct my moon in the sixth house. So, you know, spirit is, is kicking my ass right now. Like, what are you purging from your daily life? That's Mm -hmm. not aligned. Like, like, what are you Like, where are you people pleasing where you thought you weren't? Mm. I'm going to show you. Yeah, that's what I was talking about with like these little spots too, Uh where it's like these are, there are things coming up where it's like, oh, I didn't realize that I was self-abandoning there, or I didn't realize that I was really operating against myself in that particular relationship or interaction or structure in my business or, or whatever. So there's just all of this kind of reworking happening in service to harmony, because the reality is, is that that isn't in balance. That's what I've had to understand, like, because we, we want to keep harmony and peace and balance. And so, you know, we might self-sacrifice or self-negate or self-abandon or keep quiet or whatever, or do things the way we've always done them because we don't want to disrupt that harmony. Um, But that harmony, if it's created in those ways is an illusion. Yeah. It's all a fucking illusion. And the other way you can look at it, this, this is, um, so the North node is in Aries. Mm -hmm. Aries rules the individual. Aries does not ask permission. While everyone else is deciding, Aries did it three times, got feedback three times for how to make it better and is keeping going. And, um, and so a new earth is, will be, will not be created. It's impossible for it to be created, placating the comfort zones of others. It can only be created when you honor you, when you have your own back, when you put yourself first, when you go for your dreams yeah. and, and it's all fully sovereign beings that, you know, make the web of a new earth. Absolutely. And I love it. I'm just, hi guys who are on here. I'm seeing my, my honey's on here. He oh yes. The, tell, tell me about the honeys. He says the more responsibility, the better. Uh-huh. Yes. Discipline can be a sacred holder. He's so masculine and I love it. He fixed my tech stuff today. And I was just like, yes, being supported by the masculine. So yes. nice. Hi, Christopher. Hi, April. Amanda's responding to what I was sharing about Mercury. She says, feel that my phone apps have been messing up today. I've been having some intense periods of anger coming up. I'm not allowing any more blatant disrespect or manipulation of me. I don't mm-hmm. care who you are. It's hard not to feel guilty when I draw the line and hold my boundaries. Uh, so uh, there you go. And this was a little bit earlier. So we were just speaking into that. Ra also said projectors rise. <laughs> projectors rise. Fuck yes. <laughs> I love my projectors, you guys. Like. If you're a generator, get you like a solid few projectors in your corner because they're gonna they're gonna reel your ass in. 
I'm just saying. (laughs) And and so I'm in the process of exploring hiring a new assistant. Mm -hmm. And one of the first questions that I'm like, yo, are you a generator? Because I'm like, (laughs) I need need some generators up in her because I need to get horizontal. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I feel you. Um, I don't want to know how to please people. Um, Ross says, well, he's got Venus and Mars and Aries. So, and he's Aquarius out the waz. So that's not really in your, in your makeup. <laughs> that's not really a thing for him. Um, how do there's I a lot of happy? rage. There's a lot of rage in the collective that I want to speak into. Yeah, please. Um, let your rage fuel your vision because you're not incorrect. There's a fucked up shit that's been going on for a long ass time that's being revealed in a way that we can't unsee it. And we've also been shown where we pr- we've we been pretending we don't know shit when we actually do fucking know. And it's, mm. let it disturb you. Let it disturb you. Let it pulse through your body and let it fuel your vision and your willingness to take action. Yeah. Like for me on Maui, I'm like, how dare I fucking not shine my light right now when all these people are no longer alive, when all these people don't have homes, when all like, like there's a myth that like, we should, we shouldn't have joy. We should, we shouldn't, you know, Mm. keep showing, we couldn't, we shouldn't keep do like selling or anything like that when there's a tragedy. And I'm like, no, double down on faith, double down on vision, double down on yes, your personal healing. Of course. Yes. Let the grief move through you. However, joy is my job now more than ever. Mm. How dare I ask them to hold the light when they've gone through that, mm. you know? And so, and, and I look at it and, and I look at the, the structures of the matrix. I'm like, that's unholy and I'm not okay with it. So what am I going to do about it? Right. And so I've been tapping into my Kali power. I feel it. I'm over here like, woof. I feel in the fire. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love it though. And, and it's like, that's what's really needed. Like there is a place for that energy to mm. purify what is untrue, to penetrate through layers, to mm-hmm. give you the energy that's needed to make a different choice, you know? And, and I, I really believe that just right now, specifically, like there are a lot of people being called forward to really new ways of being. And yes, shedding a lot of people pleasing and codependency that's in alignment with that Aries mm-hmm. North node and everything. I really see this mm-hmm. um, and waking up not only to what's going on externally, but like waking up to like, wow, these are all the ways that I dishonor myself. Oh yes. On like a daily basis. This is how I dishonor myself. This is how I dishonor my body. This is how I'm living incongruent with my values. You know, this is how I abandon myself for Uh the benefit of other people, you know, which is really to our own Uh benefit on some level. It's just survival, but there's a big wake up around those kinds of themes Uh happening for people right now. And there is going to be grief that comes from that. And there is going to be anger that comes through that, but it's, it's coming so that we can change it. I think it can be hard to see like where, um, where it's taking us, you uh-huh. know, uh, we don't know because the, here's the thing we're being tasked with letting go of the linear creation model and trusting the quantum creation model when we've never fucking really done it before there's a new level of magic arriving into the field that we are being trusted with 
Mm. Our human doesn't understand it. We're getting, we, we're like, Hey God, can I have the uh, Q3 plan? And he's like, <laughs> like, here's what we're doing today. And you're like, cool. Um, <laughs> but I just want to speak into, because with this, with this homecoming and return to the feminine and, and trusting that, like this inner discord, and, and I'm going to say something bold. A lot of people, a lot of women disown their own power and 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 do not trust themselves and do not even respect the way they live their own life because they they all day every day break trust with themselves they say i'm going to do this and then they don't or they have an intuitive nudge and they don't honor it and it's like it's not a, a fault thing. We have been programmed to override our bodies to serve the patriarchy, to do the matrix work for the matrix, to oppress ourselves. We have been programmed that way and it's not our fault. And yet it is our responsibility to take back our power from love and this is coming from me being in my own path with this like I used to do cocaine and I thought and 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 then I would go to the gym and thought I was healthy mm. I literally thought I was healthy and I was doing cocaine I was having sex with you know horrible like, like people that treated me so horribly and treated my body so horribly. And, and it was this deep inner discord that it took me a really long time to move through. And it only happened because of love and because of spirit and because of consistency and because of community with true divine feminine beings. Yeah. And I, I share this because I believe the reason that I'm able to go to the trenches with people, and it's, it's not about trauma bonding. This is not about trauma bonding. This is about, I've gone there with me. And so I'll go there with you. I'll hold your hand. It doesn't matter how many times you broke trust with you. It doesn't matter how many times you self-abandoned. You're not broken. You're worthy. And I love you and you're a priestess and you're here for a new earth. And, and, and this is, you know, I know that this is me, Adrian, but also it's spirit because I see white light. I feel the full body chills that I know when I'm speaking on behalf of, of the force I'm here to serve. And I just... I want, the people need to hear this. Your soul is craving this message. You are not broken. It's not your fault. You're not, and you don't need to, to walk alone. Like there, that's another thing is, is we've been told, like clean up your shit on, on your own time. Yeah. Do it alone. Do you know how for thousands and thousands of years, women have gathered to heal, to ignite power together, to come home. And that's why it's called homecoming, because we get to come home together. Yeah. It's so beautiful. And like that just obviously you can see like that's really it's just really hitting me because it's resonating like so much with, with my own journey and mm -hmm. my own path to becoming a healer. And mm -hmm. I think when we've been through certain experiences, sometimes like it's really difficult to learn to be soft with ourselves. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and so receiving that external to us actually like helps us touch that place inside Mm -hmm. you know um I'm just like really fucking emotional we have so much so many similarities like in our past and Mm -hmm. it's a really big moment to feel how all of that you know brought both of us here and Mm -hmm. to the place where like we we get to have the experience of like creating this this like womb space for other women to yes. come home to themselves yes yes and it's safe it's safe yeah. and and if you i i just i feel so called to just anybody who's experiencing this and you felt that in your body, like this is for your soul. Like this experience is for your soul. It's a safe space to gather. It's a safe space to be in your power. It's a safe space and and yes, we have all these 3D things, like we're going to talk about the astrology, we're going to talk about tools, we're going to talk about action steps, and, and all of that is, is required in the, in the 3D realm. However, it's, it comes from this deep root of the mother. Yeah. And then we get to bring it into our human form into the 3D realm. And that's, you know, when Julia and I first connected, we're like, yeah, we're going to start off with a two hour class, but this shit's not happening in two hours. It's a journey. And, and so we knew a long time ago that this, this homecoming was going to be a longer container just because this is the truth and and we're in service of the truth and and the truth is it doesn't happen in one class or one day or or one you know i i i tap you know what i tapped on yesterday Mm. i said even though I slipped back into an old hustle pattern. I love myself. I accept myself and I trust myself because I noticed and I came home. And so we're human just like you all. And, and the only, like, we just have, have, walked our personal path and we've we've honed modalities to come home yeah that's what it is I do breath work every day (laughs) to come home (laughs) yeah we we take our own medicine for sure um both of us do but you know I think like this piece too about um I think like if we were to boil down one of the chief intentions of homecoming and why Adrian and I were called together and why we're doing this is wanting women, women who have a lot of power. And you may not actually know that you have a lot of power. You may know, but you may not always feel connected to it. Like, Uh it's like for my whole life, I felt like I knew I had this like power. I had this energy inside of me. I could impact people and things. I had so much that like wanted to come through me. And in the early part of my life, like I wanted it to be on stage, you know, because that's often I think the thing where if you have a really big channel, which is kind of what power is, it's like the ability to like Mm -hmm. channel a lot of energy, like through the current of your vessel. Mm -hmm. I 
you know, I, I wanted to like bring it out in those ways and everything. If that power doesn't have, it, it never goes away. Okay. Right. You're born with that shit. That's your soul. Yeah. If that power does not have significant outlets. If you don't know what to do with it, if you are terrified of it. Mm-hmm. And so you hide it away. If you're programmed, you know, based on your mother and your mother's mother and your mother's mother's mother and like all of your ancestors, society, um, past life experiences that you're carrying, all the things and your own trauma from this lifetime in your body, that it's not safe to be in the world and hold that much power. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is actually when a lot of these addictions take Oh, hold. yes. And, oh, and yes. we do weird things to discharge it, to get rid of it, to use it in weird ways, to try to get what we think we need to survive, you know, because it doesn't go away. Mm -mm. And so what we're doing here, what we really want to do, because <sighs> powerful women are like my fucking heart, man. Like, mm -hmm. I can't even say and, and we are created that way for a reason. Like we're supposed to change the world, you know, <laughs> we're here to fucking change the face of the planet. And that shit's not going to happen on accident. No, no, we must purposely hone our power. Yeah. Connect yeah, yeah. to it, wield it with precision and and, and this idea of safety, you think the matrix doesn't know about the nervous system? They leverage that shit against us all day long. So we stay small. So we stay scared of our own power. The reason they have so many structures is because we're so fucking powerful. Exactly. Exactly. So, so the, the community aspect of this is so important because I mean, you've heard it said you're the sum total of the five people you spend the most time with. If you're spending a lot of time experiencing the rhetoric that keeps you scared of your power, you're going to stay in that realm. When you enter a room where your power is celebrated mm. and where it's safe, because I don't know about you, but I, people in my family are scared of my power. <laughs> like it's, yeah. it's not a limiting belief that they're, it's they're reality, scared. Yeah. 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 And so it's not, um, it's not a limiting belief. It it's laced into the cells of your body yeah. and, and your cells call the shots for 95% of your decisions. So if you're trying to lead a new earth, if you're, if you're wanting to contribute your gifts, if you are committed to being in full potency in your power and you have yet to do consistent cellular healing, you're operating with 5% of your potential. That's right. That's the mind. And, and the mind rocks. We need the mind. This is how I describe what I do. So... Your body is the ship. Mm -hmm. Your mind is the steering wheel. Yeah. The astrology is the weather. Your chart is your personal map. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So I, I see a lot of people, they have a bougie ass steering wheel. They got a laminated map. They know the weather patterns, their, their ship, their body, their cells. Yeah. It's like, we got leaks. We got, we got water coming in the back of the boat. We got raggedy, you know, chairs. There's, there's no space we're sinking. And so it doesn't matter how powerful your mind or the other tools are. If the 95% of you is still in this state. And so that's why Julia and I have changed our lives with our modalities. It's not our opinion. It's, it's, uh, 
it's science, it's math. It's, it's, it's just 95%. We, we on purpose alter the fabric of the 95%. Absolutely. Because the DNA is also included in that 95%, you know, and yeah. what I work with is, um, you know, not just the, yes, exactly. Thandiwe. Good to see you, by the way, break the generational cycle. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just the, um, the physical DNA, like that is the physical DNA is like the 5% for me. Like when Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the DNA, um, it's like, I, I like to say, it's like looking at a giant mansion and we're looking at like the half bathroom and the downstairs, you know, (laughs) going like, well, this is, Uh, um, the work that I do also a guest bathroom. But it's like, yeah, that, I'm like, that's just a, like, we got all this shit over here, you know, <laughs> uh, are you not tapped into that, you know? So this is like, bring, like, and there are, there are, there are gates that kind of like shut us off from the full potency of like, what is like the gold that's woven into our DNA, um, that, that I actually remove so mm-hmm. that the, the ceiling comes off. Thank God. Can I the, get a uh, hell yeah in the comments? Let's get yeah. some hell yeah. <laughs> no more ceiling on, uh, on what's possible for you to hold and embody and move uh-huh. towards in this lifetime. You know, like there is so much gold. I mean, this is like why, why I do what I do is when I sit down with someone, I get mm-hmm. shown who they are as a soul. I get to see lifetimes and lifetimes that they've had in these different incarnations where, I mean, you want to talk about fucking power. Like when I sit down Mm -hmm. with a woman who's aligned for this specific container, I'm talking about like these priestess lifetimes that I see, um, powerful, like warrioress type of energy, like really incredible things. And also a lot of like alien codes and different things like this. And, and I also see ancestral imprints and I see, um, I see kind of like what's possible and what's there. And then I see the things that are (laughs) over top of it, Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm about freeing. Mm -hmm from those, those, you know, structures that keep us from remembering who the fuck we are Mm -hmm. so that that we can, we can own that and we can embody that more fully in the world. And it's been a process for me. Like, do you think it was easy for me to just change my whole business model and be like, I'm a DNA activator, like whatever the fuck that means, like is what, how I felt people are going to react or to own that, like, I am a uh-huh. Lemurian sonic priestess and like, this yeah. is fucking power. Uh-huh. You know, it takes a lot to be able to do that, especially in the online space. So it's like, also, if you are, if you are one of these people, sometimes I sit down with women and it's like, they are aware on some level, like, cause they feel this thing uh-huh. in them, or they see these flashes. It's like, I know I have this power or like sometimes when I'm by myself in my room, I like draw these light things and they Uh change the fabric of like the time space reality. And I think that's pretty cool, but I can't show anyone, you know, because they might not understand. And I feel like I'm a fucking alien and I feel so fucking weird and I don't want to be rejected. And is this even real? Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm imagining it. Oh yeah. Okay. So I said this to a client yesterday and um it's true for all of us um all of us powerful mystics all of us lumerian priestesses your people cannot recognize you with your mask on correct rip that shit off you know it was so scary for me um with because I was definitely I was in the spiritual closet for sure I was like I'm a meditation teacher and then at home I'm like 
yo, what up spirits? What are we doing today? Like, <laughs> um, and, and the moment I started being open about Lumeria, the moment I started being like, yes, I'm moving to Maui because I did past lives there because you, the floodgates opened for, for like, okay, for example, if I had never reached out to Julia specifically about Lumeria and let myself be seen in my, in who I really am, none of this would be happening. That's right. So it's like, take it off because with your mask on people not meant for you are coming to you because they think you're something that you're not. Yeah. And then you get into all kinds of weird situations, relationships, oh, yeah. definitely in business oh, yeah. with your clients and what you're trying to mm-hmm. offer. Like, you know, so it's really about like allowing your full power and potency to land in the body. And the thing about you, Adrian, like, like what, what led you up to that point of being able to be out like that and to take these steps forward is like you created that safety in your body. And I also know that you allowed yourself to be held by a lot of women that, you know, were in a particular energetic space that were encouraging your power and were holding their own power. Like, this is the thing too, is that it's like, we really have a hard time doing that alone, particularly women, because we're not actually supposed to, like, we're not designed that way. Human beings in general, aren't designed that way, but women Mm -hmm. specifically, like really need that weaving together with other women. They really need like that witnessing and that kind of presence with other women in order to, to, to feel safe, to bring that fully through, you know? Yeah, totally. And, and, and knowing that it's up to you to create that safety because, yeah, you know, it's not going to come from outside of you. We, we are not victims to be rescued. We are victories just, just waiting to be opened And, and we open with each other, like, yes, you know, my inner work is on me. However, when I'm sitting in a room with other powerful women and they're doing their inner work, it's like permission slip, permission slip, permission slip. Like, like it's, it's just the, the, the immensity of it. Like, okay. For example, literally day a few days before I was moving to Maui is when all of these fires happened okay you think I didn't have fucking fear of the wazoo Mm -hmm. I had my phone was blowing up with people telling me not to go and I turned my phone off I talked to a few key people One of them was Julia because I trust her completely to hold me in the highest. And I also, Spirit had already had me sign up for this live event in LA with some of my most powerful female mystical mentors. Mentors. Yeah. And, and I was in a, I was in a room where, where they're, millionaires millionaires of off of clean money by the way off of new earth money that's different that's a different vibe it's a different vibe they're not extracting their own life force and they're saying oh that's your biggest dream go bigger they're 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 encouraging all of these things they and And I said to my mentor, if you don't know her, Victoria Washington, get to know her, especially if you have any weirdness with the energy of money, get to know her. Um, She's been my ride or die since Chicago. I, or when I first moved to Chicago in 2015, I met her in person Mm -hmm. and um, I said to her, 
I said, I needed this. You know, I knew my call. I had already made my decisions, but I needed this. I was so scared. And then, and then people were saying like, it's so selfish for you to go, to go there right now. Like, like, like turning that whole martyr thing on me. And I, and, and I was just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And once I got in that room, I remembered the truth. I remembered the call and I was able to step into my power. And you know what happened when I got here is every person I've met, they're like, you're a healer. Thank God you're here. Thank you for coming. We need you. And so I'm going to be straight up with you without powerful women around me, without community. Because remember, Spirit's given us breadcrumbs. Spirit was telling me six months ago that I needed to come, but I didn't know why. Now I understand, you know. But it's like, I don't know what I would have done. I definitely wouldn't have moved through it as powerfully as I did. Yeah. Absolutely. Because there are, there's every, there's always every reason out here to feel like your calling isn't safe, Mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, I mean, there's a thing about like, can you even hear your calling or your soul, you know, which is where some of the work of like really coming into your body and also unlocking the DNA can help you to more powerfully connect with that. But even when you're in a position where you can feel truth in your body really strongly and you feel um, a connection to spirit that really guides you and you have um, powerful medicine that you are tapped into, there's still a lot around that is, like you said, literally designed. And then some people, you know, they, they just, it's it's not malicious, but it's just the way that things operate and people operate to, to the, it's designed to make you feel that, that that's not safe and that's not okay. And that's not right. And, you know, you got to go with what the herd says, you know, well, you shouldn't do that because that's not going to make you money or like, well, you're, you know, that that's kind of weird. So maybe you should talk about it like this instead uh-huh. But your soul is like, no, I want to talk about it like this. Uh-huh. And here's here's my twist on this safety idea. Okay. Roll with me. The most unsafe thing we can do is stay comfortable. Mm. Yes. It's an it's it's the illusion of of safety, right? Yeah, it's an illusion. It's all a facade. It's smoke and mirrors. And sometimes if you, you might know Harry Potter, if you're, if you're with us or experiencing this, I think of that, you know, how the, the big scary thing comes out and they're, and they're practicing and they do the, they do the spell and they're like ridiculous. And it turns into this silly thing. Yeah. That's, that's like a, just like a mind game I'll play with myself sometimes when these, when these things come in and I'm like, that's so silly. That's part of the illusion. And then it dissipates. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes I get support of course, but like, yeah, yeah. But you, I mean, what I just keep coming back to is it's like, you've built the trust with yourself because you're landed in your body. And yeah, you know, again, like it, it is the community element, but it's also like, it's the breath work. That's the embodiment work, you know, and the, the trauma release and the, the really landing, like the soul and the body. Right. Yeah. And committing to your human form because the body. Yeah. Because as a, as a soul, you, and this has come up a lot lately, people want to jump out of being human because there are so many distortions here however we came as humans to be humans and so this is how we so this is your house for your soul 
Yeah. And this is how you make your house. Like you land and, and you, you move into your house. (laughs) Absolutely. And one of the things I came away with, um, from my journey in New York at the event that I attended actually, which there was a lot of, um, shamanic work and, and there was breath work as well, but it was this place where like it really landed for me in a much deeper way than it ever has before that like the safety is not out here. Mm -mm. It's, it's actually not. And, and it's like, I've gone through this whole thing with like money, you know, Uh um, Leo is, is my second house. So like Leo and Virgo are like second uh-huh. house for me. So I'm still kind of in it with the Virgo stuff. It's like, <laughs> of course, you know, like okay. re-examining that relationship. Right. So there's money, but there's also like, you know, relationships, home and family, all these different things, my, the place I live, all these things that it's not that it's, it's wrong to want security in certain areas. Right. But there is a place where for me, I can take that to a really big extreme where it's like everything out here needs to be arranged in order for me to feel safe or feel like I am safe or be safe, certainly in order for me to be able to come forward in my power as a human being. And it really landed to me like deep in my fucking womb. Mm. Safety is your connection to truth in your body. Mm -hmm. That is where it is. Mm -hmm. That is the safe thing. In fact, that's really the only safe thing. Like, oh yeah. Like truly that doesn't go away. Like that is you, that is with you, that will be there with you until the day you die. And you can trust that over anything else. And Mm -hmm. so it's like, wow, that relationship. Yeah. You know, and prioritizing that, fortifying that, that's what will enable us to step forward and make these decisions. Uh-huh. that are going to have such incredible impact on our lives, on our, on everyone around us, mm-hmm. on the world, on our businesses. Right. So this is what we're doing mm-hmm. with homecoming. Yeah. And, and just, and just to build off that, if I'm out of integrity with me and my creator, I'm automatically out of integrity with every other thing in my life. That's the fucking truth, man. It's hard to look at, but it's hard hard to look at, but it's like, here's the thing. Once you start to see the ROI of looking with a lens of love, you start to crave that shit. I don't know about you, but a hundred percent. Cause you're like, why would I go back to doing it the other way? I crave it because it actually fucking works. It's not a course. Yeah. It's not, and it, it's not like, uh, like I'm reading this in a book and I need to apply this. It's like, no, I got my own fucking back. I know yeah. the truth. I'm willing to see it. I'm willing to love me. And it's like, yeah, there's just so much juice. It's like, <laughs> I am so excited about homecoming and we just invite you and, and we, we call forward your priestess power. And if you're feeling this, join us. Like we are so excited about you and, and your gifts for the world. And like, it's fucking go time. Like a new earth is here and we about to gather. Like, I just keep hearing gather the priestesses, gather the priestesses. We must gather. and. So, I mean, we're going to put the sign up link below this live. You can just bounce right in there and sign up if you want. If you have questions, reach out to us. We want to talk to you. We want to connect with you. Um, And I'm more than happy to like hop on a call with anybody or just connect in that way and just just really feel each other and see if it's right Um, with zero pressure at all, like totally just to, to connect and, and really feel into it because, you know, I, I, I'm wanting to 
really connect with the souls that are like ready to do this kind of work and bring their medicine forward more powerfully, have it, have it land deeper in their body, be able to amplify it and magnify it in a group of, of really powerful sisters, women, and, and just want to just want to connect honestly with, with women who, who resonate with this, who, who resonate with this path and this lineage, you know, like Valeria, I know is like, sorry, I don't even know if you're still on Valeria, but, um, you know, she's a Lemurian priestess, like a hundred percent. She, she does these beautiful, um, you are on, okay. Thanks for the heart, but she does these, these beautiful Lemurian transmissions that are like, it's art. So there are these like codes in, in her artwork and like water and, you know, Oh, I think I've experienced those codes. I think I follow you on the gram because literally it's like this, like water vortex. And I'm like, I'm like sucked into it. I'm like, this is, I know, I know. And it's just, I just, it's, it's a, it's a really joyful thing to be able to connect and share. And we need each other right now as we're being called out out of our smallness, out of our shells, uh-huh. out of the structures where we've maybe felt like this is the thing that keeps me safe. And so it's my thing and I'm staying here and it's the thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, we, we've got to connect and, and call each other forward. You know, we've mm-hmm. got to link arms and, and, and move powerfully into this new way of being because it's time to serve. And Lemuria is, is, is coming back. It is like the sacred waters. It is the, it is the true nourishment of the feminine. Yeah. And it's time. Yo, we did way too many lifetimes. Yeah. The it's other two, two, way two right now over here, by the way, it's two, 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 22. This lifetime is going to be different because we, we fucking say so. And because not, not words in a journal, because of the way we move, because of the, the decisions we make and who we link arms with. That's right. And if you're used to like doing it alone, you're out there like solopreneuring yourself. Believe me, I have been there. Um, And it can be challenging to really accept and receive a lot of support and holding but Jesus like it is the only way to honor the true potential of the magic that you have within yeah think think about it this way You're, you're in your full potency when you're magnified around other women in their full potency. Walking alone, you're only able to access a certain wattage. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And so it's time to like crank it up. Crank your magic all the way up. Crank it all the way the fuck up. Maybe we should put that as a tagline. Crank your magic the fuck up, babe. But so I actually drafted a post this morning and 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 one of the slides says it's time to turn your magic all the way up. It's true. (laughs) It's true. And when we get together like this, like with a powerful intention that feels really guided by something bigger, that's really like it's there is a field of energy that that is holding us as well Mm -hmm. like that's that's when we get to to crank it but also in order to crank it we got to be landed in in our bodies Mm -hmm. you know we've got to develop that safety in our bodies and we've got to open up and unlock what has been dormant in there We've got to release the programs from this lifetime and many others around, you know, and from our ancestry around like why it's not safe. Yeah. What gets to exist in the world because you chose differently? Mm. 
what gets to live because you allowed something to die. Ooh, love that. Yeah, I'm so excited. I'm so I'm excited. So, so excited. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We want to hear from you. So please, please reach out with any questions or if you want to connect, you can check out the link. Adrian's going to put it below. We start August 31st for homecoming. It's, a three it's one week journey. from today. Yeah. Yeah. So it's go time, baby. It's go time. <laughs> Let us know if you're watching the replay. Let us know what you thought below. I want to thank you guys who are on here live. Um, so much for joining us and Ra, thank you for being just like such a beautiful contributor and masculine support here. I love you. Thank you, Ra. Yeah. Thank you guys all for taking the time out to, to connect with us here today. We love you so much. I'll see you soon. Love you. Bye. See you in homecoming. Yeah. Bye.